story is just a face. <laughs> Don't want to get stuck behind. No, that's cool. Okay. cool. Um, so we're on Growing Media. Uh, Ken, do you want to talk about where you got the idea for the name? Okay, yes. Yeah. So uh, it was actually one day I was walking, you know, to Randy's class, and uh, it was raining out, you know, another April rainy day. And next thing you know, I have my umbrella out, and next I'm looking up, and like, man, I'm very, very dry, and I'm having the umbrella cover me, you know, cover, cover me from the rain and such. And I, that started, you know, generating the idea of, Umbrella media that we can cover any marketing needs for you know specific clients like yourself. So I'm Kenneth Woolley, by the way, from Union Beach, New Jersey. And I'm Sam Cox. I'm from Brandon, Mississippi. I'm Mary Ellen Walsh. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm Garland Patterson. I'm from New Orleans. I'm Hannah Humphreys. I'm from New Orleans, Mississippi. All right. So before we get really started in the presentation, Carl's going to ask you guys a question, and that's why you have no cards in front of you. All right, so I know that we all have a definition of success. So I just want you all to take 30 seconds, jot down a couple words that come to your mind when you think of what success looks like for you personally. What success? In what, what context? Whatever it means to you. Whatever, if there were any specific benchmarks or if it looked like having a certain job or a certain lifestyle. Um, what would it be to you to be successful? Would it be job-related, family-related? That's why it's true. Right. Which part of me? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. prioritize first. success looks like a certain thing or a certain benchmark for a lot of people. You're groomed growing up to graduate high school, to go to college, to graduate college, to get a job, start a family, get married, get that first promotion. These are these big benchmarks that equate to being successful in life for a lot of people. So when it comes to retirement, when you hit that senior age, you know, that kind of seems like the end of the road for a lot of people. How can I be successful when I've already hit all of these things? So our idea with Next Stage Mississippi is um, positioning the company as the kind of premier service to help seniors in the county age successfully. So we'll explain what that means as we go on. Yeah. So yeah, basically what Garland's talking about is our big idea for our campaign, which is age successfully. It's a quote we got directly from uh, next stage when they can talk to us talking about how we want we want to help seniors keep going in the next stage of their lives and succeeding and so we've come up with a lot of different ideas for how we can help push this idea um, and we're going to show a video that's going to be like an ad spot for television it's going to be really short and it's just about one specific senior citizen talking about what they think success is and this will kind of help get the idea rolling that everyone Every client is going to have their own idea of success, and how can we help them keep pushing that idea? There we go. Enter. Wish I had your mama. 
restart that real quick. Okay. I'm pretty independent. Of course, I had my mama, but I'm by myself in 91. And I still do my housework, and I'm proud of what I do. And I go to church every Sunday that I can. And I'm proud of a lot of things, darling. I'm just proud that I can still do what I do. And so that's just one example of the concepts at art. It's just targeting what specific clients need and what they think that they can do successfully in their next stage. And so we also have a lot of different creative ideas that we're going to go through right now. And then we'll get to the details of the research and the medium plan. So let's see what's up next. Yeah, so we wanted to implement on your website a blog idea. So this is on a lot of people's websites. And there was an idea of maybe doing once a bi-weekly blog, just highlighting something, letting your readers know what's going on, or the readers and your patrons know what's going on in the company, what changes, what's new. And then maybe once a month, here we have an example of um, highlighting one of your satisfied customers, basically. And this is an example of what it could look like, um, asking what do they like about Next Stage, that what do they you know does Next Stage provide for them. And um, I just think like a highlight on one specific person a month would be really beneficial and it'll show people that like that you guys can say as much as you want, we're, we rock, like we're good, we, have, we provide a lot of services, but having somebody actually sit there and say, like, I love what Next Stage is doing, it helps me, it's beneficial, will help more people be interested in the brand and the concept. And we took this idea, I know that y'all already have a blog tab on your website, um, but we kind of wanted it to put a positive spin on it, right? So a lot of what we were saying were kind of almost cautionary tales things to kind of look out for in aging, which there is definitely a place for that. I think everyone should be aware of that. But I think also kind of being able to put these very positive, exciting tales of aging and things that Next Stage are providing to customers in Lee County and eventually other places if you plan on um, expanding with this program. Um, it really just hit this, kind of creating a sense of community in this success that can be generated with Next Stage services. And also, letting people know that it's not just these services, you guys provide the lifestyle. So with going forward with that, we would be able to send out an actual um, brochure through the mail. Um, so this actually highlights um, something that we're going to talk about a little bit later is um, the services, and we actually have a different idea um, of what we could do for that for y'all. Um, it highlights the story of what the services are, um, and a, a little bit more of one of our taglines is aging does not require a lifestyle change. Um, we want to help you age successfully. Um, and then on the bottom left, you see kind of where you can fill out your information and actually put that back in the mail and send it back um, just to let um, y'all know as a company that you know people are interested in those services. Um, these are the people that would require those services. So getting into the SWOT analysis, um, the greatest strength that I think Next Stage has is having this um, recognition with the Mississippi Methodist Senior Services. So you have this established brand that I think people are familiar with. Um, so that is just a really great kind of booster to being able to implement Next Stage the same way that you have with this kind of, um, I don't know, recognition in the community. So with the area of Lee County, with services that we kind of researched, Googled, saw what we could find, um, there's a very unique opportunity for growth within Lee County with the services that we um, are going to suggest that you implement. Um, we also love that you have the .org domain name. Um, I think credibility, especially within the senior community, um, 
the whole fake news trend. I think having that dot org domain is a wonderful start. Um, but one of the biggest weaknesses that we saw, um, and you'll touch on it a little bit in your original presentation, is having consistent funding for doing these programs like Meals on Wheels. Um, so we're suggesting that, uh, Mary Ellen's going to touch on it in a little bit, but we provided a solution to that to give us some consistent funding to keep these community programs going. Um, and we also recommended um, changing the phone number with a 662 number, making it more local, just creating that sense of community and kind of safety within our brand. Okay, so Mary Ellen is going to touch on the subscription services. Um, but that is our idea to kind of provide your consistent funding. Um, and with 12 campuses across Mississippi, I think that the way we structured this program, if you were interested in eventually expanding it, it would be something that would be very easy to roll out across the state. Um, any threats that we saw deals with funding, and then we also want to make sure that we're prioritizing the safety of the customer of the next stage. Um, obviously, these people are coming into their homes in a space that they want to feel safe. Um, and so that was a big part of our rollout and our branding for the next stage. And so we're going to talk about our target audience, which might be slightly obvious because of the services, but we broke it down from research that Ken's about to go over that we're going to start targeting elderly males and females living within a 10 mile radius of Tupelo for now. I know that y'all have ideas of expanding to other campuses, but we targeted Tupelo for the most part. And then we have independent adults that are open to the concept of having people come to their house, but we're also targeting their children or grandchildren that might have more access to media and social media so they can find out about the services. And then from the surveys that we did, most of the income from the houses were between 60000 to 100000 can you want to talk about research? I'll switch over for you. So, you know, I, I see that we have you know, a couple of representatives from Next Age already here. So you guys are already this, you know, specialized individuals that understand the services that you provide. However, us, you know, we're, we're just undergrads on this. We're not really, you know, too familiar with the services. So we had to do, you know, a whole bunch of research, you know, with different databases such as Ibis World and also Qual, um, Qualtrics and, you know, just understanding how the industry works as a whole. So our main objectives were basically to discover how consumers interact with services, what drives them to, you know, select different services that, you know, are in the market. And to also see um, basically what kind of, what's the best way to spread these messages and distribute information, you know, on, in, a digital, in a digital platform. So the second area of research, we found um, a lot about many, many reports and statistics about elderly abuse. Um, you know, many, many elders get taken advantage, whether it's financially, whether it's neglect. We also have um, just opinions about some of the care services that are already in the market, how they actually feel towards, let's say, companionship, medicine administration, just what, what, they, what they're looking for. We also have data representing how caregivers actually service some of the consumers and clients that they provide for. Our primary research, we uh, created a survey. All of us collectively, you know, we, we came up with many uh, survey questions, imported that into a Qualtrics software, which is just, you know, a, a research software. Um, we gained demographics about some of the market. We also understand, understood how certain customers interact with social media. Um, we understand, I believe, in the packet that we received, there was a specific TV schedule that already that Next Age uses. And we didn't see a presence in digital, you know, the digital platform, so we're trying to take it up you know, to a di different points of marketing channels. So right here, there's certain statistics um, just about the industry as a whole. You'll find a deeper analysis in the campaign books, basically just talking about, you know, uh, basically just talking about elderly abuse, how you know, elders get taken advantage of, and also how many adults, they, they have a perception of what services should be provided for, for their elders. They already have certain ideas what should be provided, and when looking at this data, at the, at the end of the day, there are certain <coughs> services that many, um, that many companies actually provide that unfortunately NextAge does not. So, with this, with this concrete evidence, we basically 
started coming up with ideas that we think that age can implement. This is just more of the statistics that you will find in the deeper analysis in the campaign uh, in the book. This is the primary research. Uh, the bar the bar chart on the left <coughs> is talking about how consumers, you know, with our survey uh, participants, how they interact with social media. We saw that Facebook was basically the, the best platform to start sending messages out on social media. And then on the right, we asked, we, there was a survey question of the four services, you know, many services that NextAge provides, like Handyman service, the CareLink service. And we asked them to say, you know, out of the services that aren't provided, what are you interested in? So we have, you know, pet care, we have grooming, personal hygiene was, uh, was a big, was a big, like, term that many people, you know, many of our participants actually, you know, said, like, oh, we're interested in this, and also data back that up as well. So right here is the pivot tables that we created. Basically just, we asked um, on a scale of one to, on a rank of one to four, basically to see how participants feel about the services that NextAid provides. So we asked, you know, on a scale of one to four, would you be interested in using Meals on Wheels? Um, housekeeping services, care lane services, and handyman services. So we broke this down uh, basically by gender, female, and male, and see, you know, just, just sort of how, how they are looking, you know, what are the services that they are seeking. And also, once again, there's a deeper analysis in the campaign book. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the media plan, which is what I've spent a lot of time working on. I'll go through it real quick so we can get to the more fun, creative stuff we have. Uh, but basically, this is, I took the budget that we were given, which is 30000 I spent a good chunk of it on advertising. I picked television, radio, newspaper, and magazines kind of lumped into newspaper. And then we did a little bit of digital research on Facebook. Um, so we can go through that real quick. The television part, I got in contact with Comcast and talked to them about their providers around Tupelo. And they suggested using linear television for using advertisements. And that video that I used earlier was kind of the root concept of a television ad that we could use that focuses on intimate customers or clients. And that would run about $26 per TV spot from what Comcast was telling me. And if you wanted to use an annual budget of that, it was about $4,500. And then next is radio ads. So for radio ads, we had a radio spot with the script written down that Mary Ellen came up with. And that would run 30 seconds or so, and I came up with some different spots that we could use throughout the day. Found rates for local stations like WAQB, WHSA, and WAFR. And that would be about almost 10,000 um, annually, not entirely sure about the exact prices on that. And then for the newspaper, I talked to the Daily Journal. And they have a new service that they're providing, which is modular ads, which they basically find a fit for your ad that works for them. And it's a little bit cheaper. So we have different concepts for magazine ads that are different sizes. Those would run about 26 an ad if we wanted to do color. And since we're using pictures of people, we decided color might be a little bit more impersonable and make it pop out more. And then that would be like an annual cost of about 4,000. And so I think next is Facebook ads which we, on a budget of about $20 a day, we get around 3,000 clicks or so, which is a pretty good amount of traffic. We weren't looking to make money off it. It was more about using conversions for clicks and getting more reachability for your services. That way, people can get to the website and find out more about it. Facebook's not really like a big pushing to make money. It was just to get people to know about the services. And so Ken actually has some Facebook ads he came up with that target each specific service. If you want to talk about them. So these are some of the services that are already provided, like you know, housekeeping services and also the Meals on Wheels. What I came up with basically is on the bottom, basically the little text is just to just to share, you know, to prospective consumers, this is the services that we actually provide. And the call to action is to either call the local number that we came up with or also visit the website because at the end of the day we're trying to generate more traffic towards the website and generate more business revenue for you. Mm -hmm. The handyman service is also just another post that can be shared on Facebook. And the companion service is something new that we thought of basically through research where sometimes, you know, elders and elderly are just lonely. You know, they just need a face to, you know, share 
share you know, moments with, interact with, whether they're playing dominoes or watching Lifetime. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they're, you know, they're, just, trying to, they're just trying to make connections. So with that, um, we would also, with um, the brochure as well, um, we would be able to send out direct mail. So this is just essentially asking, like, do you have this essential, like, issue? Like, are you facing these issues at home? Do you need these services? <coughs> um, because our next age, which would resonate with people, um, would be able to give you those services. Um, it, the rest of the direct mail letter goes into detail about, you know, what they can provide you. Um, just basic details about that. And then um, the brochure would be put into that, and we wanted to be able to target people who were 62 and older in the Tupelo area, um, introduce Next Age as an overall service and how we can help you age successfully, and then um, just has the service. Can you guys want to talk about the subscription yeah. service real quick? So for all this to work, you need funding. And when you guys presented in the beginning of the semester, we noticed that you had seven, about 75 people on the Meals on Wheels wait list. So we came up with a subscription service for the handyman service specifically. And with that would with for like $50 a month, what that would get the person is two and a half hours of work. And if they, they can allocate their time throughout the month. If they don't want to, if they don't use up their hours, an hour and a half will roll over to the next month. So you will maximum have four hours a month. And we, and then we're also on our the app and the website. We're gonna do we would do by like um, a bio on each person. So the elderly know who exactly who is coming to the house. They see the face. They know who to expect. And we would do background checks on all of these people, and we think that like this is a good way um, to generate revenue. We talked to some other people in around the D.C. area that kind of has the same like idea, and they did focus groups, and people said they would pay fifty to ninety dollars a month for this service. So I think starting out, fifty dollars would be perfect, and then um, going ahead, you once you have more people. It, you kind of act like as a subscription service, like Netflix or something. You just get billed monthly, and they do jobs that would, you know, light bulb. It's exactly what y'all do, but it gives you some income to provide the rest of your services. So with the launch of the subscription services, um, we have up with the idea for a mobile app. So what you see in front of you is a free base model. It's very simple. Um, Obviously, I have the home page, the login page, um, and then on the end, on my left, is going to be your home page. So with the app, um, you have the option to download, subscribe to the services. Um, this is a kind of a one-stop space where customers can keep track of their payment options. Um, they also have the option to book services. Um, so instead of having to go online to go on a computer now that everything is really mobile, um, they can book services, see who's coming to their house so they know who to expect, um, and that comes up in the notification section. Um, it's also linked to the website, so any blog content, any website content will be going live on the application. Um, and so they can kind of create a sense of community um, by giving feedback the app also has a calendar component. So with any services booked, um, the client will be able to pull up their calendar on their app and see what the week ahead looks like. So like I said, this is a free based model. Um, it's very simple, it's very bare bones, but what this provides um, is the opportunity to have a functioning application um, and to gain feedback from consumers. So with the first kind of test run of this. Um, you can talk to consumers about what they would like to see added or what maybe didn't take, make a lot of sense and you're not spending you know, 90 to $150 an hour for having someone go in depth and develop coding for a very complex app. So this is a simple way to kind of have a test run if this is something that you would eventually want to do and invest in um, with JavaScript to have a full functioning mobile application. 
And one of the last points, I'm just going back over the budget real quick. So the advertising was around 18,000. Uh, 18, the blog creation could be about 2,000, depending on, and you can find local people that have way lower prices, and people that are students specifically that would just help out probably for free. The app itself would be about 2,000. The video campaign is 1,000, that's very high. Some TV ads you can do for 100 bucks, depending on. And then for any other prices, or for any expenses you want to use with developing the app or implementing the brochures or any of the other services we talked about, there's about 7,000 left over for the budget that that can be used for anything. Um, so evaluating everything that we've talked about with the advertising, we're hoping to see about 5,000 or so more people follow you guys on Facebook. For the television ad, it would be a 14% increase for customers to be able to recall your brand. About 30% for them, oh, 30% for them to recall your brand. 14% would increase possibly sales, hopefully. 6% for brand favorability, so people would know who your brand is over the other brands that you might be competing with. The radio stations I contacted would help expand the reach to over 30 miles, which could get some people maybe outside of the reach you have now, but still willing to use your services. And then the Daily Journal has a readership of about 327,000 people. So getting those ads in there would also help with getting your brand out there and people know who you are. And so that brings us back to the notebooks. Okay, so Hannah's going to collect your note cards. Um, and we're going to talk about how y'all define success. So before Hannah shares, I want, want y'all to think about what you wrote down. Um, and I want to ask you if that definition has shifted as you grow older. So I know that what success looked like for me coming to college has shifted in the five years that I've been here, and I can only imagine that it will shift so much more as I age. Um, so Hannah, do you want to share some commonalities? Yes, so I think actually a lot of things that y'all said were very common within our entire campaign. So each of you said collectively setting goals and goal progress, attainment, um, achievement, recognition, impacting lives and leaving a legacy, being remembered, retirement and vacations, and said so doing whatever you do well and with integrity. So I think essentially what we want to you know tell you all about is that the people who do um, have want your services, they want to be independent want to maintain that independency and that's how we would be able for y'all as a client would be able to help them age successfully. And that's just five people in one room so imagine all the different clients you have and all their different ideas. You're creating a service that helps it become more personal for them and you can help them feel like they're succeeding as they age. And so with that I think that is our presentation um, and we can take any questions you guys have. On your survey, how many people actually answered your survey? I think it's close to 35. Yeah. 35. And do you have like the demographics form or anything like that? Yeah, that's, that's, in, the, that's in the campaign book as a yes. whole. We also included limitations of the survey to see what we could have done better for further research. And so as part of that, where was it distributed and how? Uh, this is distributed on Qualtrics, and basically we just had emails from, uh, we had a certain email list, and then we just distributed it from there. But email list, I guess is what I'm asking, because Qualtrics doesn't distribute for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just had, like, we had an email list as a whole. You know, we had, you know, contacts from, basically, we're looking at decision makers that we know, that we know personally. Okay. And then seeing, because some of them actually are currently looking for these services, not necessarily in Mississippi, but just in, in general. Mm -hmm. So having those ideas and having those, you know, perceptions of, of how services should be provided gave us an idea of what we think would be best. Further questions? I loved the idea of the mobile app. And it goes in depth kind of how we would pair up with the subscription service um, and all of the flow of the interfaces and everything is explained in depth in the campaign. And again, much with the subscription service, it's a subscription. So whether they use your services or not, you're still getting the revenue to use with your other services. Tell me again how the video piece that you played at the beginning plugs into all the... It's part of like our television ad, just coming, like it would be a more extensive television ad, but it's more about having clients focus in and people watch the ad and kind of be able to look into this person's life and see that it's like one idea of what they think is successful is being promoted by Next Stage 
and hopefully they'll be able to have that same exact kind of personal experience. So that's just an idea we had to kind of get someone that's not in our group and not like, associated with this class to kind of talk about the idea of group learning. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, cool.